So I want you to imagine if you could actually control your loved one's thinking about addiction and recovery. Yeah, like I'm talking about like mind control, talking about subliminal messaging. Can you imagine just how powerful that would be? But in reality, there are some sound psychological techniques, principles, and theories called neuro-linguistic programming that can be used to implant subliminal messages in your loved one's brain. You can, on a subconscious level, use these techniques to influence your loved one towards recovery. I'm telling you, this stuff works. So for those of you who are new here, welcome to Put the Shovel Down. This is a YouTube channel dedicated to helping you understand the science and psychology of addiction and recovery. I'm Amber Hollingsworth, Master Addiction Counselor, and I've been working with people and their families for the past 15 years. It's my job to make sure you are always five steps ahead of it. You're going to be able to benefit from all of my years of experience. I give you all the strategies for free right here on this YouTube channel. Okay, so back to our topic, which is mind control. Can you mind control someone into recovery? Like seriously, actually you can. And I use this in my office. Mind control over Debo. But before I tell you how to apply this in your real life situation, let's take a look at just how magical and effective this can be. So what you're about to look at is a short clip from a show on Netflix, which is awesome by the way, and I highly, highly recommend that you see it, called Magic for Humans. But this particular scene, this thing that you're about to see, uses the psychological principles of neuro linguistic programming to control someone's thinking. So now neuro linguistic program, if you break it down, neuro means brain, linguistic means language, and programming means behavior. So this is how do you use language to influence the brain to trigger certain behaviors? And all of this happens on a subconscious level. I can't wait for you to see this video because I want you to see this in action for yourself. Great though, like Copperfield, Houdini, they're in a league of their own. I'm gonna give you some instructions, okay? okay? Listen very carefully. Think of any celebrity, okay? okay? Saving that thought in your mind. Keep it private from me, okay? Because I'm gonna, Try and figure out who you're thinking of, okay? Okay, now, before you see the answer, write down in the comments, what celebrity do you think he wrote on that paper? We'll see if the neuro-linguistic programming is actually working on you. Okay, like, no cheating. I'm giving you a second now. You can pause this if you need to. Go down to the comments. And then we're going to go back to the screen, and we're going to see what he writes on the paper. Do you guys think he's going to be right? Okay, I'm locked in. For the first time, who are you thinking of? Okay. Uh, uh, yes. I can read you like a book. So did you get it right? Did you write Tom Hanks down? If you didn't write, is that what you were thinking? Now, what's really cool about what you just saw is even though this magician said, hey, I read your mind, he didn't really read that guy's mind. He implanted the suggestion of Tom Hanks in that guy's mind. So it's even cooler than reading someone's mind. It is actually controlling someone's mind. Now, Let's take a further look and see if he can replicate that because any good scientific experiment has to be able to be replicated. So let's see if he can do that again. Did not get a variety of results. Tom Hanks. Yeah. <laughs> Tom Hanks. Dang, wow. No. <laughs> <laughs> <Are> you sure? <laughs> okay. Wow. Everyone said Tom Hanks. What are the odds? Pretty good, actually, when you use. So as you can see, he did pull that off over and over and over. He got all those different people to be able to say Tom Hanks. And what's really, really cool about this is anyone can do this. The power of suggestion can be used on it, almost anyone and done by almost anyone. Now, let's take a look at how he actually pulled that off. Mental messaging. It turns out a few well-placed references to Tom Hanks movies can fly right under the radar. Let's watch that again. Want to see a trick? Yeah, I'd love okay. to. This as well, this could be big. Make a big splash. All right. The greats, though, like Copperfield, Houdini, they're in a league of their own. I'm going to give you some instructions. Think of any celebrity. Okay. 
okay? Saving that thought in your mind. Keep it private from me, okay? Because I'm going to try and figure out who you're thinking of, okay? What's that thing you do for a living? Okay. okay, so you can see the way he was using all of those Tom Hanks movie references to subliminally put the thought of Tom Hanks. But actually, he's doing more than just implanting the message about, because if you'll watch, he's actually giving some instructions, not just implanting the message. Let's go back and take a look at that. In your mind, keep it private from me. Think of any celebrity. Okay. okay. Saving that thought in your mind. Keep it private from me. Okay. Because I'm going to try and figure out who you're thinking of. Okay. What's that thing you do for a living? So See, when you look at it again, you can see that not only is the Tom Hanks reference coming in there, but the telling of the brain subliminally what to do with that. Like picture it in your mind. Save that thought in your brain. You see, there's a lot of messaging going on. The other thing that's happening is he's kind of boring with that small talk. And the reason that he's kind of boring, because you don't create a lot of neuroepinephrine and dopamine in the brain. Essentially, that's a nerdy way of saying it's boring. And so it doesn't make people's brain pay attention. And they might either guard against the subliminal messaging that you're putting in, because when you activate that frontal lobe, it's not as easy for your subconscious to accept those messages. But not only do you not want that frontal brain to guard against those messages, but you also don't want them to pay enough attention to catch those references. That's how you get to speak to the subconscious. So the three layers here are the Tom Hanks references, the telling the brain what to do, and the creating the right brain conditions to be able to speak to that subconscious mind. Pretty cool if you ask me. Okay, pretty cool, right? But you kind of need for your loved one to do a little bit more than say the word Tom Hanks. You need your loved one to change their thinking and behaviors. You want to influence them right along all the way to you can get them to say, I want to change. I want to be sober. Well, how about if I teach you some techniques to get them to want to be sober? And I'm telling you, this is so simple, yet so crazy effective that you're going to love it. Now, neuro-linguistic programming, which is usually called NLP, is pretty complicated, and I definitely can't teach it to you all in one video, but I'm going to teach you one of the most important principles right here in this video and I'm going to give you access to some more free resources at the end of the video. Okay, so NLP, there's this concept of trigger words. These are words that just take them by themselves. They don't really seem to mean much and you don't even pay any attention to them because they're so commonplace. But remember when we looked at the magician and I said he does all that small talk and it's so commonplace that your brain, your front brain, your thinking brain doesn't pay that much attention to them. That's what allows these trigger words to actually get into your subconscious. These are words like imagine or picture it. And I tell you the people who pay the most attention to it is like people in sales and marketing. They want to know how to influence people to get you to do things that they want you to do. If they can learn to understand it, you can learn to understand it. It's not that complicated. In fact, you're already beginning to think, um, that's actually pretty easy. I could see how that works. It makes a lot of sense. So it was interesting a while back, there was this study done about using the word because, and it went something like this. This is how the experiment went. So basically they took these people that were all in a line, well, it was like a Staples or what, but these people were all in line for um, making copies at this copier machine. And they wanted to see if the people in the line would let this other person, that's kind of like the person that's in on the experiment, cut in front of them or be ahead. And so they tried different things. They had the person say different things to see what the people would respond to. And what they found was just if you ask someone to be able to cut in front, there's a pretty good chance that they're going to let you. But if you add in a reason and you use the word because, and it doesn't even have to be a good reason, then the chances that they're going to let you cut in front of them and go ahead and make your copies go up to like 93%. Yeah, that's pretty crazy, right? 93% if you just use the word because. So it would look something like, hey, can I um, get in front of you in line here because I really want to get out of here pretty quick. Who doesn't want to get out of there pretty quick? But because you use the word because, the brain immediately thinks, oh, there's a good reason why I need to let this happen. And it subconsciously sends the message and people would let this person ahead to make copies. And so when I get clients into my office, I will say things in these little, it's almost like planning 
planting these little seeds into their subconscious brain, I'll say, man, when you beat this addiction, life's going to be like this. Or gosh, when we once we get past this section, it's going to be great. Or, you know, like, or I'll implant things in their brain about their abilities. I'm like, oh my God, like you are such a good problem solver. Like you're going to have no trouble figuring this out. You see how I'm sending those little messages in? Any of you who are big on, or you like the idea of like manifesting, um, as in like manifesting your future, this really connects in with that because when you use these this language what happens is the brain automatically creates this picture because your brain doesn't really work in words that's just the data that's coming in your brain actually your memory works in pictures so think of it like the words are like a document you produce in Microsoft Word but then your brain puts it into like a PDF a picture file and so what you're doing with the words is to create a picture that you want and your brain doesn't know the difference in if it's visually seeing a reality, a picture in real life, like something right in front of them, or an imaginary picture. Either which way, your brain believes that reality. So if you can create these imaginary pictures in somebody's subconscious brain, they slowly start to believe and see those pictures. And you got to remember, you've got to do this in a subtle enough way so that it's not over the top and you're not making them like super focused or aware. You've got to be casual. And that's where it comes in where I do all of the other videos where I'm teaching you how to build trust in your relationship. Because when you do that, not only are you building the credibility, we've talked about that on other videos with it, you're going to cash in later, but you're also sort of making their walls come down. You're making them less defensive, which is creating the right circumstance for you to use these subliminal messages. And up next, I've got this video for you about manifesting recovery.